Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Of course, it's your girl, Crime Berry. Welcome to another episode of Carly, where every week I speak to someone in Dominica, get to know a little bit more about them, why they chose their career path, and their plans for the future. Today, I am excited to be here at Tropical Blends Cafe with my boy, DJ Smooth. DJ Smooth, what's going on? I'm good. Taking it easy. Right. Chill. Yeah. You know. We're chilled having, you know, a Some nice smoothie smoothies. from Tropical Blends Cafe. You guys should try this. This is the um, weight loss. I'm trying to trim down, so you know. Right? And I'm having an anti-inflammatory. Looks nice. Try the next time. It is. Okay. So guys, we're gonna get to know a little bit more about DJ Smooth. First of all, tell the people what is your real name and how <laughs> did this name DJ Smooth come about? What is my real name? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna say this on national TV. Um, I don't know if it's my real name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my real name is actually Stephen, Stephen McKenzie, but I'm um, better known to the wider world as DJ Smooth forever. And where did the name DJ Smooth come from? Um, actually, originally Smooth came from um, where I'm from. I'm originally from London, England, so while I was in England, I went for a few different names at first until I got something that I was really comfortable with. And then I came up with Smooth. It was originally G Smooth. And because um, I didn't want to use the DJ tag, it was originally G Smooth, and then um, a guy that I used to work with was like, Yeah, that's really you because that's how you deal with people, that's how you mix music, that's how you talk. And I was also a barber at the same time. So that's a side profession that I have in the way. I, I didn't even know. No, a lot of people <laughs> don't know that. So, yeah, when you see me shaped up, I actually do myself. So, yeah, so. Um, Barber by profession, so the, the hair salon that I worked at at the time was actually one of the top hair salons in London and they requested or required everybody to have a nickname. So Smooth just kind of just fit in and the name just stuck since back in the early 90s. Cool. So you, you said your original profession was being a barber. What got you interested in becoming a DJ and when did you start DJing? Well, the, the, I've always loved music, you know, straight up. Music has always been a passion of mine. My father, back in the days, used to DJ for a lot of Caribbean parties, um, house parties and so on and so forth, family and friends. So, you know, I, I got a love from that. I remember going to my father's records, going to his turntable, playing the songs, trying to mix cassettes and records together. Right. And then, Stephen! <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I started like that, and then my cousin used to have his turntables in his room, so I would go there, try and do a little thing. I never really got the the, the, the push from him, and then um, I hope to. There's a fr friends of mine that were in it. I got into a sound system back in the days. It was sound systems. Yeah, mostly everybody used to be in sound system. So I started off originally with Majestic Sound System. So big up to Majestic from London, and. Um, I used to be in a sound house every day from like about 9, 10 o'clock in the morning until probably 8, 9 o'clock at night just playing music. We had crates of records and that's all was in the house and I used to be there every day as God make a day. I can't even remember for how long but I just used to do it religiously. And then I remember one day the guys, one of the guys in the sound system walked in while I was mixing and playing and he's like, Yo, you're really good. And I'm like, I'm just practicing. He's like, no, you're good. You're mixing better than guys in clubs. Oh, wow. And I'm like, nah. I'm like, I'm just home practicing. Yeah. And, you know, before you had to be able to mix before you got out play. You know, right now it's more about the music, not really about the, the, the skill, right. just entertaining people. But before you really had to have the skill. You know, and I couldn't talk on the mic, so. <laughs> <laughs> So I literally had to learn and it just kind of just went from there, the rest is history. That was like back in 92, I started professionally and then the guys pulled me into a competition with the sound system and I won in the competition. That was the first one I won, that was in England. They had segments, I won in the soccer segment and I just continued from there. Eventually I left the sound system and started doing soccer. Wow, so you were 
Okay. And what who or what would you say are your biggest influences and motivations when it comes to music? Uh -huh. Well, a lot of artists I listen to, um, when we have to talk about DJs and producers who were really influential for me, coming up, I can remember people like David Rodigan from England, some from Mayhem, and a lot of people know of RS Digital, you know, yep. here in Dominica. So the, the flip side that people don't know is RS Digital is really a uh, big legend in the music business, which a lot of people don't re realize. I remember coming here and meeting Aris and for me like I'm even getting goosebumps saying you know it was an honor to meet him because like these guys were like the who's who in the music industry okay. in England so Aris, Rodigan, um, Tony Mataron, Stone Love, Metro Media those were a lot of the sounds that I listened to when I was younger coming up um, more on the hip-hop I listened to guys like Tim Westwood like I said England and DJ Clue from the US. So those are my influences, the, the scratch guys, the, the, the guys that were in the sound system, those are my original influences. What, what would you say you love the most about being a DJ? Making people happy. Straight up. I can't say anything else. The joy and the feeling that I get from seeing people enjoying themselves when I'm playing music, nothing can beat that. Nothing in the world can beat that feeling. It's just something amazing, you know, to be able to touch people's lives and actually make an impact. You know, I've met people years after I've played at spots that I even forgot, and they're like, yo, I remember that night because of this, because of that, and so on and so forth. You know, it is priceless to be able to create memories. Rapid response recovery for all your heavy duty needs. We are the heavy towing and recovery specialists for breakdown of cars, trucks, buses, and the machinery. We offer 24 hour roadside assistance, crane service, container hauling, goods hauling, island wide service, and so much more. Rapid response recovery for all your heavy duty needs. Being a DJ or about the entertainment industry on a whole, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's not much that I don't like. It, it's it's kind of weird. Maybe one of the things that I hate the most about DJ, people might find strange, but I don't really like crowds. So. Oh, that is surprising for yeah. a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me twisted. I absolutely love a crowd, a full club and playing for the people and being up front on the stage i like that particular aspect of the spotlight right. you know when i'm dj smooth when i'm that personality but out of that alter ego when i'm steve and i'm just chilling the regular guy i don't really like to be in crowds i don't like the spotlight on me i don't need that extra attention right. i think I, I get enough attention from my profession already right i don't need it <laughs> so you're you're one of those DJs that will be you know low key in the back just waiting for his turn to, to get on stage. Yeah, yeah. Most of the times you see me out at an event that I'm playing, I normally practice to be there early enough, at least early enough to listen to the set of the DJ before. Not not for anything else, but to listen to exactly what he's playing so that I don't come and play by the same music. Right. Because I know that that's a complaint of people around the world that when they go out to a gig with DJs, everybody plays the same songs. Right. So I always try to be there at least before so I can listen so I don't follow through and make that mistake. I, that's something that I, that's something that I hate. <laughs> that's another thing that I hate to go back to that question. I hate playing the songs that the DJs played before. I absolutely hate that. If I, I don't normally put together a playlist, but if I do happen to put together a repertoire and there are songs in it that the DJ before has played, I'm going to switch it up. Okay. Straight. And would you say that there was ever a time where you got nervous before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah that's, if a DJ says that he doesn't get nervous, he's lying. 
you know, straight up. There's a time I think that everybody gets nervous. I've been nervous a few times at events. Um, it's never really shown. I, I can remember one event in particular where I got nervous. That was um, in St. Martin. I was um, DJing in St. Martin for some years and I went into a DJ competition. And I didn't win. I think I got like third or fourth. But I got nervous because something went wrong with my equipment while I was playing. I could have fixed it. But at the time, it was just overwhelming. And I got real nervous and just wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. <laughs> you know? I can never, ever, ever forget that night. For me, that was probably one of the worst nights of my career. Oh, wow. So how would you say that right now, you, you handle, you know, making a mistake during your set, if you ever make a mistake? Um, Every, nobody's perfect, so everybody makes mistakes. I have made mistakes during my sets numerous times, you know. Does anyone notice? No. I'm absolutely positive to show. Nobody notices. I normally, I work pretty quick. Um, for some reason, I kind of work good under pressure. So when stuff happens, I kind of react quick. You know, with a competition, it's a bit different because you got to play this, you got to set, you got a time frame that you have to stick to. But on the regular, something goes wrong, I kind of fix it on the fly, you know? And I try and keep relaxed because it's not good to panic. When you panic, then you kind of act out of yeah. you know, out of what you normally should do. So I don't panic and just kind of just go with the flow. How would you describe your your song? I mean, what, what sets you apart from other DJs? My style? Yeah. Um, what sets me apart from other DJs is um, versatile a lot of DJs say they're versatile mm -hmm. but I know for a fact I understand what it means to be versatile there's a way that every single genre of music should be played you know Zook DJs play the Zook in a particular way dancehall is played in a particular way hip-hop is played in a particular way soul is played in a particular way and at an early age before back in London, everybody used to be a particular DJ. They would be a DJ in a certain genre. Right. So you find people ask, what type of music do you play? Right. You know, so I will say that um, I don't play any genre, I play all of them. Right. And they were like, well, which do you prefer? I can't say which one I prefer because I literally trained myself and learned from DJs in each genre so that when I come to play this genre, I'll play it how it's supposed to be played. Not how I think it's played and not right. how I want to play it, how it's supposed to be like. Some good stuff. I, I try to do my homework, you know, as much as possible and I advise all DJs to do your homework. What you think you know, there's always more to know, you know. So, always practice, always try to keep fresh, you know. Learn the genres, learn the music, learn the artists, you know, because you'd be surprised. The, 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 the world of music is so wide a lot of people don't really understand how, how big it can be. And what would you say is the best advice that you've been given for the span of your career? Um, I don't know. I've, I've gotten advice from a lot of different people from a lot of different aspects, producers, artists, managers, um, top DJs. Um, I've taken all of them. I think that is good for somebody to listen to just about everybody, especially when you have people that have experience in the business. Never think that you're too cocky or know too much to know. Always be humble and listen because you can always learn. So that is one of the advice that I've got. And always be humble, always keep a positive mindset and never get big headed. You know? So I try to practice those all the time. Um, being big headed as a DJ could be a DJ's biggest downfall any DJ's been with you know, and not only that, you never know where you're, where you're going to end up. I remember an um, uh, international DJ that I knew of, and he ended up in a situation where he lost all of his music, you know, which is maybe a DJ's worst nightmare, you know, losing all his music. This happened to me before I had both my laptop and my hard drive stolen, so I can understand and know the, 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 the issue that is trying to work to get back your music, you know, that's just... Uh, struggle in itself and I remember listening to him. he's one of the biggest DJs right now and he was talking about how he used to be he used to be very cocky figured out he's the man he's the baddest thing 
Now, I'm not saying that as a DJ, yes, you gotta believe in yourself. You gotta have some kind of an ego. Right. You know, you do. But doing that, there's a risk at burning bridges. You know? And then he, I remember watching his documentary, he was talking about when that happened to him. Now he needs to get music. Nobody was a mess with him. <laughs> Everybody was like looking at him, laughing at him, you know. He had to do a gig and he couldn't do it. He went to the, the venue to explain he couldn't do it and all the other guys were laughing at him. But the reason why they were laughing at him is because of his pompous attitude before. Right. If he was more humble and more cool, then dudes would be willing to work with him. So I try and keep a humble, humble and cool attitude, so I'm cool with everybody. So big up to all my DJ brothers. This episode of Parley is brought to you by Tropical Blends Cafe. Okay, and if um your fans were to want to, you know, connect with you on social media, we know you don't like crowds, but <laughs> <laughs> you have to, to connect with your fans. So if your fans wanted to do that, how would they connect with you? Alright, well, I'm available on all of the social media platforms. I'm available on Twitter, at DJ Smooth, underscore Forever Hype. I'm available at um, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, everywhere. Um, YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, MixCloud. Um, you can find my mixes on all of these sites. And YouTube, I have my YouTube channel as well. I'm kind of updating it, so for those of you who are wondering, just to let you guys know, updating the YouTube channel, I've had a few issues with YouTube, but I've got it out there. So I've got a lot of mixes coming, and there's other stuff that I've been working on behind the scenes, production, as well as mixes. So um, you guys can also check out on YouTube. Um, I'm sure you know of Mr. Guada. Yes. Yeah. So um, I have a track that well he's got a track that i've been working on with him i'm executive producer on it along with scrappy the rhythm god it's a song called real friends so make sure you guys check it out available on all streaming platforms so that's the aspect of what i'm trying to do with my profession right now getting into a um, vlogging as well so i'm going to be joining you i'm going to get into vlogging i'm going to tell you exactly what it's about but i'm going to be getting into vlogging more on the tv and um I have some more music coming out. I'm working with quite a few artists behind the scenes. I have a few rhythms coming out. So I have the Soka out with Mr. Guada. I have two more Sokas coming out of Buyo, Dancehall, and I'm looking to work on Soka and Reggae as well. And I have artists from St. Martin, Waterloo, Dominica, Antigua, the US, and a few guys from England. Oh, cool. And what would you say is your your ultimate goal in your, your career? My ultimate goal in my career, I think I've achieved it, is making people happy. I always just wanted to play music, make people happy, um, be one of the most popular DJs, which I think I achieved, being in Dominica, going around the region, and uh, being on a radio station, which I also hit. So I'm on the radio station now. Pipes Radio, you guys check it out on Pipes Radio every day from 3 o'clock in the afternoon to drive. Um, I used to, I wanted to do a Sunday show, I started that, don't do it anymore, but I did it, it was pretty good. Most things that I try and set out to do, I get it done, so right now, more the production, I'm pushing artists and getting Dominican music out there, which is a mission, but I can only do so much as one person, right. everybody gonna, I, I think that with, with everybody's collective effort, it can work, we can all do it. DJs can do it, but DJs could only do so much. I can get you guys music out to as many international DJs as I know and as many radio stations, but that's as far as I can go. Yeah. And if if you were to, you know, give a message to your fans, what would that message be? The message I would give to my fans, everybody, give thanks every day. Always show gratitude. No matter how small, try and show gratitude. Always keep a positive attitude. No matter what you're going through, and it's easier said than done, but no matter what you're going through, try to keep a positive attitude. And any song that you want to know or you want to hear about, give me a message and I'll play it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. So guys, I had the best time you know, speaking to 
DJ Smooth. I want to thank you all for tuning in to yet another episode of Parley. Of course, we're here at Tropical Blends Cafe. This episode is brought to you by Tropical Blends Cafe, Rapid Response Recovery, Triple Star Song, and Connect 767. Remember, if you have not done so as yet, you need to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so that you know every time I upload a new video, and keep it locked. There's so much more that we have coming for you right here on Cranberry TV. Until next time.